Imagine Hull House, a settlement house in Chicago founded in the 19th century to improve social conditions for the poor. Imagine you're a colleague of social reformer and Hull House founder Jane Addams, and you're asked to create a proposal to keep the causes Hull House supports viable by spending valuable resources on one key program. What area would you focus on? Child labor? Assimilation? Health care? Juvenile delinquency? Working conditions? Which issue would you choose and why? Now, imagine you're in seventh grade and you're solving problems through a curriculum model called Problem-Based Learning, or PBL. Problem-based learning, I think to me, is just learning everything that you learned f so far in the year and even before that and interpreting it. For Layla and her classmates are learning to interpret and propose resolutions to ill-structured problems. Yeah, yeah tenements yeah, and health care. They they like ill-structured yeah. problem means that the students are in charge of figuring out the process as we go. So a lot of times the students are used to being told you know, you should search for these terms, and this is the exact question that you're trying to answer. Welcome, Board of Directors. It's so wonderful to have you here for our board As meeting. students prepare really to present their proposals, teacher Laura Wells decides to play the role of Jane Adams in costume. She's eager to hear their ideas to keep Whole House focused on key issues. In a much more realistic situation where they've been given this list of proposals and they have to do the research. And of course, at first, they're kind of like, what, what do you want me to do? What, what, what am I supposed to, what, what should I search for? And I'm like, well, what do you think you should search for? Problem-based learning is student-centered. During a PBL unit, teachers serve as facilitators. There's no teacher telling them, okay, well, this is the answer they have to come up with that solution together because that's what you do in real life. We had proposals put in our faces, two of them were big disgraces. Knocking down just three choices, how to listen to everyone's voices. Kind of took our information and uh, put it into one song. Tenement factories, child labor, none of them in anyone's favor. This assignment, it really lets us go on our own resources, it lets us go online. There aren't really restrictions besides the due date. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, could you just summarize for us in a, in a less musical format, just to make sure that the point is clear? But that one of our conditions is that... Group products vary. However, each one requires collaboration, research, and creativity. Students develop the expertise of practitioners in the field by solving authentic problems and creating authentic solutions. You know, the group that was doing the board game, they really thought carefully about what they were trying to teach through this game. You know, they thought very carefully about what the salary should be and, and what would be realistic for the time period. And, you know, if they're trying to show that, you know, healthcare is the answer, you know, what cards would they need to use in their game? What made it seem really well researched? Um, I don't uh, the amount of facts that were in it. I really liked their last part because how they put it, the analogy. Unlike simple animation, it won't disappear. It was very convincing. Problem-based learning basically does all the best practices. In terms of your engaging your students, you know, check, that part's done for you. They're going to do that. Deep thinking, higher level thinking, they don't have a choice. They have to do that in order to arrive at a solution. They're going to have to think that way. Um, building relationships with students is also much easier when you're doing problem-based learning because you don't have to be up talking and lecturing at them all the time. You have so much more time to get around to each group, to talk to each kid. So realistic. There are three components to every successful PBL unit. They include an ill-structured problem. For example, students learn about Whole House by investigating an authentic problem that has more than one solution and needs more information before it is clear. PBL units have a metacognitive coach or facilitator. Teachers guide instruction by asking students to think about their thinking. Students as stakeholders, meaning students assume the role of a person that would have a stake in the outcome of the problem. In this case, they are the Board of Directors for Hull House.
Today's presentations actually reveal the five phases associated with PBL units. Problem engagement. Students are introduced to the problem and their stakeholder role. Inquiry and investigation. Students research the problem. Problem definition. Students state the main issue and what they want to do about it. Problem resolution. Students present their solutions to the problem. And problem debriefing. The teacher and class reflect on their learning. Whole house is where you want to try to land if you've got an illness. Problem-based learning provides students with the opportunity to wrestle with real-world issues. They use the 21st century skills of critical and creative thinking, problem solving, and collaboration as they search for information and develop solutions to the problems that they encounter. They're always asking me things like, well, well, how many paragraphs are we supposed to have? And, and, and how many, you know, this, and it's, it's really not about that. In the real world, it's about, you know, do you make your case convincingly or not? For me, it's a much more freeing way to teach. The best way to solve problems is to solve them creatively. If you do things creatively, it gets more done. For more information, contact the Department of Instructional Services and click Advanced Academic Opportunities.